Hello guys and welcome back. This video is going to be very much for all of you uh, entrepreneurs out there or business owners and I have to make this video because I fucking hate what's going on right now and I think people need help with this. Um, but you need to stop relying on merch and ad revenue to build your business. Now, Ad revenue is fine because it's an extra thing that can come in. You know, if you're, I personally don't have ads on my YouTube videos, but if you did, there's nothing wrong with that. Just make sure I don't spill this tea. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, it's extra money, but as long as it's not the foundation of your business model. So I was looking at some guy's channel the other day. He has 252 million views since he started. And all of those views have, he's got 2 million subscribers and all of these views have earned him uh, just over, like very slightly over half a million, okay, in seven years. Now, if you divide that down, I think it's 72,000 per year, you know, after tax, it's like 45 grand a year. So it's pretty much just like, a, it's an above average wage, but it's, you know, it's nothing great. And you think for 2 million followers and 252 million views, it's pretty bad. It's pretty bad, isn't it, guys, really? And you think if YouTube stopped tomorrow, that's all of his income pretty much gone from that one resource, which I know he earns money other ways, but a lot of YouTubers, a lot of people on Instagram, they live and breathe on brand deals. We got a brand deal, yes. They can pay our bills for another six months. It's like, guys, it's not sustainable. There's no way to build a business. Like everybody now wants to be Insta famous or TikTok famous and Nobody wants to build a real business anymore. And I made that video the other day about guys from this generation can dominate for decades because these kids coming up are clueless. They, 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 they'd rather be famous than have money and build a business and have something of worth. They're kind of like, oh, who cares if nobody knows who you are, which is a crazy concept to me. I'd much rather have the money than the fame or the success than the fame, the lifestyle, you know. Um, but they're obsessed with the numbers. They'd rather have the numbers than the money coming in. And a lot of people's first reaction, I think, is because they're not naturally entrepreneurs, they're not creative, you know, their mindset isn't one of a creative individual. So they look at, they look at a business model and they think, okay, I've got the numbers now, I've got 100,000 traffic, I'm making 20 grand a year off ad revenue, let's throw in some merch, let's push this to six figures a year. And they become, they become sorry, quite forceful. You know, they're pushing, they're pushing their audience, buy my merch, buy my merch, merch now live, merch now live, because they want that money. They have no idea how to make money otherwise. And then the day that YouTube's kind of, YouTube kind of halved the income that people could make, the revenue, you know, they gave everyone a smaller percentage. Everybody's revenue got cut in half and a lot of people panicked. A lot of people went crazy because that's the only way they knew how to make money. The game was too easy for them, you know, and since Instagram companies have stopped using influencers for brand deals, a lot of these influencers are having to fly to Dubai and suck dick. As, as, as blunt as that is, I've written an article on this and I, I, think, I, I think somebody from the BBC contacted me. I think. I think they're doing a documentary on it. I wanted to do one too, but I think the BBC are doing a documentary or Channel 4, something like that. And they, they asked if I could be in it. I was like, no, it's, it's, it's dangerous press. Um, maybe in the future. I'll do my own one, maybe. But I just thought it was a dangerous concept. But there's a lot of male influencers as well going out to Dubai and, you know, sleeping with guys, which is, I mean, it's fine. Make your fucking money. I, I guess it's illegal, but it's fine in my book. I think go and make your money if that's what you want to do. And they're getting paid like 50 to 100 grand. And the point I'm trying to make is people have no idea to, how to build a business. But I promise you, doing it off ad revenue and merch, number one, merch is, it's all shit. Everyone just gets a t-shirt with a bit of writing across the front or a logo. It's, it's wank, isn't it? You know, like Maverick, you know, Logan Paul's thing. He's made millions off it, but shit. And most most people aren't going to make millions off their merch because they're not Logan Paul. Um, you'd be much better off making a, a quality product, you know, and waiting a little bit longer like I am with the shirts, you know, something of worth that fulfills a need and actually has a purpose in the world because then that will last 20 years or whatever. The ad revenue, now that's dangerous because you're putting your life in somebody else's hands, okay? That's why you don't want to be doing that because somebody else now controls your future. Somebody can just say, okay, YouTube's no more. We've been bought out. Ad revenue's no longer a thing. You know, nobody can make money off our platform anymore. Fuck you. Or we're going to cut it down to 10%. We're going to take 90. We're going to cut it down to five, take 95. We found a way to increase our profit margin during a dangerous time, like second lockdown COVID. 
we're going to make as much money as possible to protect our existence. Now, that's plausible. That could happen. You never want to put your life in someone else's hands. So stop. Just please stop business owners or anybody who's just made their own startup or something or is, is looking to make a personal brand about themselves. Forget the ad revenue. Forget the merch, okay? Definitely forget the merch. Kick that out completely. The ad revenue, have that's, that's like, that should be your fifth biggest income stream your 10th biggest income stream that should be something you have in the background like i don't even have, i don't even monetize my videos even though it would be like seven eight hundred pounds a month i think at the moment maybe a thousand a month which is nice extra money but i don't even bother doing it because i'm just like i, I don't want to I, I don't need it i don't need to rely on that like that's so it's it's a silly income stream because as soon as you start relying on it, it's dangerous I actually, I had actually going to make more money in the future by having the videos free, so that more people watch the videos for longer, and they're not, ah, oh, you know, I got to skip this ad, I got to wait, and then they scroll, they find something else, and they click off completely. By having no ads, it's just click straight into the video. You know, my subscribers are going to go up, and that'll make me more money in the long run. It's like a lost leader, okay? Um, and that's the kind of mentality that you need when you're building these businesses now. People do it. People do ad revenue and merch because they want a shortcut to success. They want money as quickly as possible. I would advise to forget all of that. Cement yourself in your industry as an industry expert. Provide something like I do with the content. Give something back to the people. I will build an entire streaming platform with maybe 100 grand's worth of money, maybe 200 grand's worth of money. To be honest, to kick it off, is like 50, 60 to get all of the UK content done. Uh, some cracking content, if I'm honest. It's some of the... Uh, overseas stuff is going to be really cheap too. I'm going to Ghana. That's not too expensive. The flights are 500. I think that's not too bad. Um, to do a fitness project with the African bodybuilders out there. These guys are jacked. I think that's one of the most interesting documentaries I'll ever do. Um, you know, and there's little things like that, but it will be like 60K invested from me. But then because of that investment and the contents on there and the platform's so good, I can then ask people for just three pounds per month or 30 quid per year. It should, I know it should be 36, but I'm going to do a deal at like £30 per year. I think give people Christmas free and uh, everybody gets their birthday month free. There we go. Or something like that. Or no, let's say Christmas, let's say December and January. Everyone gets it free because they're months where you're inside a lot. And it'll, it'll drive signups as well. So that's a good strategy. There we go. That's how I think, guys. That's business 101 right there for you. Um but yeah, it would be 30 quid and thinking that I've invested 60 grand just as a startup cost, never mind all the other costs coming after that, but I'm asking people for 30 pound per year. Like that exchange is enormous and that's what will make you rich over five years, 10 years, and then 15 and then 20 and then 30, 40, 50. Like that will make your family generationally rich as long as nobody comes in. You know, you always get that son who's kind of fucking clueless when it comes to business and they come in because they grew up with, with money and they fuck everything up. Um, but that will give you probably 50, 60 years of wealth, generational wealth, you know, as long as you make the right steps and do the right thing, because it's kind of an ethical way of doing business. The customer's getting good value for money. Um, they're getting great content. They're getting authenticity, you know, along the way, every step. You're not asking for, okay, now we're going to upsell you. It was three pounds for the first two months. And then I fucking hate that shit. Just have a cemented cost, put it in place. If you run a business like that, other people will make more money than you in the short term. Like I've got a prediction that the majority of these influencers and YouTubers and Instagram people and TikTok people who are famous now and making a ton of money, give it five, six years, I think all of them will fall away apart from maybe KSI, Logan Paul, uh, I think maybe like two, three more, but I think they're the only people who have cemented themselves to be gener generationally popular, you know, where the next generation will know them as like an icon, like Conor McGregor, he'll go into films, he'll go into movies, like it's very easy once you build up a brand of that stature to stay at the top, you know, but these reality TV stars flash in the pan, a lot of these YouTubers flash in the pan, Instagram stars, <laughs> it's funny they say stars, they don't do fuck all, but flash in the pan, you know, that anybody who's looking at it saying, oh, I want that life. You know, any of you guys who are watching this now saying, I want to be the next. I, I, you know, I don't know many of their names, but I want to be the next enter name here, fashion guy who's, you know, making a hundred grand a year, flying around the world, taking pictures of brands. 
that's cool, but the whole market is number one, saturated. And number two, that kind of bubble is about to burst where people are moving away from the influencer shit. And you might be better off making your own fashion content and starting a fashion podcast or going and spending £100 per week on a fashion haul, bringing the clothes in, trying them on like the women do, but doing it for men and doing it in a more professional manner. You know, and just coming up with fashion content or having a a £100 budget and going out shopping every weekend and saying, this week with £100, this is what we got. You know, you're better off doing that and building up your own audience. And then once you get to a certain level, then the brands might start working with you or whatever. But, you know, I would probably at that point then try and create my own products. That's what I'd do. I'd try and come up with something sustainable or make the product sometimes is the video. That's the other thing. The product sometimes is the video as long as it's good enough. You know, it's not some trash content. It's actually a proper product where you're putting some top level production on something. Um, like I said, like the streaming platform, like I, I won't put ads on there, but that's what you could do. You could do like some fashion content and that itself is a, is a product. It's like a 20 minute mini documentary about shopping on a budget. It's actually something I'm planning to do. Um, you know, the secret to shopping on a budget is to go logo free. I'm going to try and do that. Give somebody a budget, let them go and shop and see what we can do with it. What we can pull out the bag, just do like a mini 15, 20 minute uh, short film sort of thing, short episode, that'll be fun. I think that'll just be free content on YouTube. Um, but it's stuff like that, and then a brand might end up slapping, let's say, five grand on that, and that's how you could make some money. But using the ad revenue would then be the secondary form of income, and then you wouldn't rely on that. Well, to be honest, it would be the third income because you wouldn't rely on it. The second income would be the brand deal. Your first income, although this sounds weird because it's not an income, is the fact that your platform still exists and it is 100% ownership to you. And although you're making no money off it, your subscriber base is going up. Your popularity is going up. That is what will always remain. I remember watching um, Brian Callen and Brendan Sharp, who do the Fight on the Kid podcast, and Brian was talking about how he nearly got this big movie role. And he was like, no, I didn't, I didn't get it. It fell through. It is what it is. And he was indifferent about it. He was like, yeah, it is what it is. I don't care. And he said, look, the podcast being here, this is, I will never stop doing this because this is the backbone of what we do. It was like all this other stuff will come and go. It'll be here today, gone tomorrow. The podcast will always be there. It will always be that kind of staple that they can fall back on where their core audience exists. And that's what you need. You need a foundational thing. Exhibit A, this YouTube channel is probably now my foundation. The website is perhaps my, was my foundation. Go uh, YouTube, that'd be pretty good, wouldn't it? YouTube for kids. Um, Google messed up my traffic. It did a new algorithm and just fucked everything up. I don't think they like websites like mine. So YouTube now, this platform, just getting on this camera and just speaking to you guys and making zero money is a kind of, I don't see it as this, but it is a lost leader. It just, it grows the audience more. It grows the subscriber base. It gets us all together. You know, and we're all watching this now and having a chat, so to speak. And you guys can contribute in the comments. I can reply back. This is the backbone of First Man. The point I'm trying to make is when the streaming platform exists, the shirts are making millions. You know, it turns into like a gym shark level billion dollar business. I'm opening First Man gyms all around the world. I will always dedicate 15 to 20 hours per week here in front of this camera. You know, somebody might be editing it so I can do even more videos, which would be even better. But I can sit in front of this camera and I can talk to you guys and I can vlog, I can document, I can, the free shit, the foundational shit at the bottom of the pillar that I can keep putting out. You know, the authenticity, the the valuable content that's going to you guys for free, that kind of in the trenches you know, you've got your shovel and you're in the soil and you're fucking laying the concrete. Those kind of days when I used to be a builder. It's not the the fancy putting up the nice conservatory or orangery and cleaning it all up at the end, making sure it's all polished. It's the first day when you've got the digger out, you're digging the hole, you're putting the concrete in, you're it's pissing hard with rain, you're muddy, you're hungry. This is what this is, just sitting in front of the camera and just grinding it out. This will never go away because this is the foundation of a business. But people lose their mind and they start focusing on ad revenue and merch and the content becomes shittier because they're focused on the money. They're not focused on the value that they're providing. And that's why I think ad revenue, yeah, it's a great bonus. Don't focus on it. Merch, please, I mean, please don't do it. You can if you want, but don't do it. Um, 
it's quite contradicting, wasn't it? But you can see my feelings on it. I don't like it. Um, but those sort of things, they drive you down a monetary route. You know, where you're thinking money, money, money. How can I get more ad revenue? I'm going to, at the start of every video, yeah, I might do a little video about my shirts, but I'll give you a story as to why I made them. There's a message behind it. And I believe it, I, I wouldn't make it if I didn't believe it helps people, but I'll show you, you know, that there's a real world benefit. And I believe that for the exchange of cash, you're going to have something that makes your life better. Okay, I'm happy with that. I can go with it. But these people that are like, merch available now, go check it out. Link here. Go and buy it, guys. Great new hoodies. Um, you know, and then just after the merch ends, he's like, special surprise for you guys. Listen to this. And as they do that, an ad pops up. You know, a non-skippable one. So they're guaranteed to get paid and then wait for their audience to then come back to watch what the surprise was. That, for me, is cheeky. And... I don't think those people will exist past the next three to five years. I think they'll all fall away. I think that's how you, that's how you're a flash in the pan. You make your money quick, you get out, which is a strategy in itself. You know, plenty of people have done it. I was watching a um, new music video by T.I. earlier. I used to love T.I. And um, the, the song's actually quite good. And I thought, why did T.I. ever go away? You know, how bad is he doing right now? You know, he hasn't made music for ages. His net worth's like 80 million. He obviously made enough money in the music industry, grabbed all that cash, moved into producing and silent, signing talent and started doing other things. So since then, he's gone up. But what I'm saying is even if he had just grabbed that money, got out and just lived a normal life, he's done his time, so to speak. He's ticked that kind of monetary box and he's bounced that. So yeah, that's a strategy within itself. But I'm in business for the long haul. I'm, I want to see First Man here in 50 years time being just as big as uh, GQ was at its pomp, you know, but still growing, still moving forward um, and having replaced GQ. So in order to do that, it's going to be authenticity. It's going to be staying away from the merch and the kind of ad revenue. Like I said at the start, taking the ads off your videos increases engagement. You know, viewers are going to stay longer. People are going to be happier because they don't have to pay for that YouTube premium where you have to pay to get rid of the ads. So I'll just have no ads instead. And if I don't have any ads, I can use music as well. I can use copyrighted stuff and nobody really has any problem about it. So then my quality of my stuff actually goes up. So it's little tricks like that, guys. But the message of the video is stop using merch and ad revenue. Stop, well, not stop using it, but stop relying on it. Stop relying on brand deals. And, you know, that can't be your live and die. That can't be your lifeblood of your business. Like if you're going to build a proper business, have a purpose, have an identity, an ethos, solve a problem for someone you know, it, there's so many different problems out there that could be solved that maybe you've got the key to, the answer to. That's why these fitness people are doing so well because they do fitness videos on social media and it solves a problem of, oh, you want to look good? You want to get in shape? You want to look like me? Well, I'll show you how I do it. Here's my diet. Here's my fit. These guys are killing it because they're providing so much value. And you've got to have a similar business model in whatever you're doing. If you're in real estate, you know, go and show people around free ha uh, houses, but give that content out for free. You know, do some viewings, but film it all and put it out for free, like Ryan Serhan. Because he's done that for free, he's changed the game. You know, he's given up his time and money to do that. And he's gained those clients and then asked those clients if he can go and do it. And now he's CEO of his own company and he's got a net worth of like 20, 25 million never lose sight of the power of free guys being authentic and being a good person and giving back to others if you give back to enough people they'll give back to you in the long run and this whole merch and ad revenue and brand deals game it is here today gone tomorrow it won't last